now, when he joined us on Friday, New York Times columnist Tom Friedman weighed in on that question with this response. We set up this crazy debate that it was mass or job, you know, mass or school, mass or football. And it never should have been that. It should have been mass for school, mass for restaurant, mass for jobs. And, and if people want to, um, uh, and, and as you know, we talked about this. I was very early on saying we have to, we have to balance lives and livelihoods here, folks. All right, join us now uh, to talk about the sensitive topic of lockdowns uh, and the economy. Kevin O'Leary, chairman at O'Shares ETFs, uh, Shark Tank co-host and a CNBC contributor. And John Hope Bryant, founder and CEO of Operation Hope and Bryant Group Ventures, and I'm hearing that more and more, uh, lives versus livelihood. So, uh, it, Kevin, uh, how do, is it possible to thread the needle? I will ask you that, to thread the needle between total lockdowns, because I think John makes the point that without getting the virus under control, you can't have businesses and you have an economy. There's other people that say, thre try to thread the needle and try to protect the vulnerable because the cure might, as we've heard so many times, the cure might be as bad as the disease. If you shut schools, you shut small businesses, and we lose all these operations permanently. What's your answer here, Kevin? I spent a lot of hours this weekend on these shutdown rules, specifically in Los Angeles, where I have investments in food services. I have a very simple question. How is it possible when I've spent sixty, eighty thousand dollars on the back of the restaurant and the front of the restaurant to provide the seats and the heaters and it, it complied with the city ordinance and was just about to reopen. No tents. This is not tented. This is outside with air flowing. I'm shut down. And right across the street is a big box retailer with food services, vending machines and open service courts inside the store providing food inside of a big box. Walls around it. And you could argue to me that they have HEPA filters. I know with certainty they don't. So you're telling me the viral load in the outside of my restaurant is higher than the viral load inside of the big box, which is enclosed? That's ridiculous. And there's no science claim on this. You, you, people are making accommodative science statements. How can outside be less safe then inside, you heard Gottlieb himself on your own air just moments ago talking about eating in restaurants outside with a mask on. So now I as a shareholder have to go bankrupt and all the employees I have have to be laid off for the third time. This is totally unfair. This is just Los Angeles. Kevin, and by the way, it's not just right. L.A. How come I can be open in Miami in the same chain? Right, Kevin, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you this. I have, I have eaten inside a restaurant maybe more than five, less than ten times, where it was, I would say, 20 percent occupancy. That's the only way I would do it. Ceilings were high. The only person that I came in contact with was the waiter. The nearest table that had other patrons, whether they were talking or not, was at least 20 feet uh, away. And I, I, for myself, was comfortable. Now, I don't know if I'd do it with where virus uh, infection rates are now, I'd be less hesitant to do that. At the same time, I have run out of a big box store because I was shoulder to shoulder. There were so many people there when I was in the checkout line, shoulder to shoulder. I had a mask on. People, Some do, some don't. But I felt much more uncomfortable there than I did at the other place. So I don't think it's a monolithic uh, type answer. And I, I don't know if I'd use science to, to, to validate everything. John, what, John Hope Bryant, we always have the, the heart versus mind uh, uh, argument with you. What does your mind tell you we should be doing here uh, versus what your heart tells you we should be doing? Because I know you care about entrepreneurs and small businesses in addition to lives. You know, uh, good morning, everybody. You know, when Kevin O'Leary's background is fascinating and inspiring, and when his mother uh, invested $10,000 in his business after a major investor backed out, that wasn't science, that wasn't technology, that wasn't a spreadsheet. That was her belief in Kevin O'Leary. She knew she knew heart uh, would lead to head. And look at him now. Look at him today. But he was the quintessential small business owner. Look, the, 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 we we are suffering now for lack of a national plan. The, the, even the vision, even the Bible says, without a vision, the, the, the people perish. Uh, we need a national plan, uh, and you're going to have lumps in that plan, uh, uh, Joe, uh, where you have hot spots because we never got this thing under control to begin with. Uh, masks. 
saves lives, and masks are also good investments. Uh, if we had a national plan and, and made it, look, you cannot have secondhand smoke in commercial spaces. You can't smoke in people's face in, second, in public spaces. Uh, you can't drink, drink and drive. The, the Supreme Court said 80 years ago that the public good overrides private interests when you're in a commercial space. So you're going to have, because we didn't, we had a ready fire, fire aim approach to this and no policy and no national approach and we're at war with a virus. This is war. Uh, we're now playing, we're now playing catch up. So some places are overdoing it. Some places are underdoing it. Some places are not doing it all. We need to come back with masks for all. That's good for business. I'm a small business owner. I require masks. And I think that'll give people comfort to come back in the economy uh, and, and Kevin will get the shareholder value that he wants. But how's that sound, Kevin? Uh, you, you sound like I, I, you're more, I think, Kevin, with with the notion that, you know, it, it, in the United States, people are going to not everyone's going to adhere to things like they're going to be uncomfortable adhering to things like this. You think that people should be able to make their own decisions on some of this? Yes, I think by now we all know the story of this virus. We know how important masks are, and people should make their own decisions. I'm simply questioning the policy that we have. John made the same reference. And, and at the same time, I see in this next bill, $17 billion targeted for airlines. Are you kidding? You don't have to fly in an airline. You don't have to go to a movie theater. But you have to eat. And now you have to choose how you're going to do that. And we are restricting people from making their own choices about going to a restaurant outside. I'm not even saying open them inside. I'm only asking how can it be fair? How can it be right? How can even the science justify that eating outside is less safe than eating in a big box retailer right across the street? And I mean right across the street. Cars in the parking lot, thousands of them, and I have to go to zero? I have to go bankrupt? What about all the people that work in that restaurant? What's going to happen to them? Why don't we take some of that $17 billion and give it to them instead? Forget about me as a shareholder. Forget about the owner of the restaurant. What about the millions of people that work in restaurants? Why don't we just take that $17 billion from the airlines and give it to them? These are the decisions we got to start thinking about. That PPP program back in March was a blunt instrument and, as far as I'm concerned, a failure. Stop funding the companies and give it to the actual employees at this point. So I'm really unhappy. I mean, I'm really unhappy about this L.A. decision. If I have to go to zero, at least at the bottom line, pay the money to the employees that you forced me to fire for the third time. Uh, this hey, is Kevin, a false... I, I, I... Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, Andrew. John, just hang on for a second. I just wanted to, talk, to say to Kevin, I, I very much agree with you. Uh, I very much agree with the idea that the rules need to be... Uh, rational and based on science and the idea that you can walk into a big box store and they're serving food and people are taking their masks off, that makes no sense relative to shutting you down. The, the rules should apply across the board. Um, I, I just want to be 100 percent clear that we need to protect our small businesses. The question, of course, is how do we protect our small businesses and to the degree that the federal government uh, needs to step in if they're going to shut down businesses like yours. Um, how much money they, they should be putting out there. I know you've also advocated for the government not to be supporting small businesses. So it's, it's a very complicated issue. I said employees, Andrew. I want to support employees at this point. I've given up. I am going to lose 30% of my companies. They're going to go to zero, and I, as a shareholder, am going to lose my money. I have already understand that. I'm over it. Now I'm asking myself, why are we picking the employee in the big box over the person that used to work for me in the restaurant you forced right. me to zero in? Like that just, th th there's something really wrong here. And you're yep. picking winners and losers, giving money to th theaters. You reported last week, the economy's changing so fast, it's like a chess game on steroids. You just said last week that there's a major movie theater that's going to now release at the same time online that they put in movie theaters. That's code for saying movie theaters are going to zero. Like, I get it. Right. But, you know, but Kevin, at, at the end of but, the but, day, but, why don't we just give the money to the, the employees? Question, I give is, up. We're having, but, we're having two different but Kevin, conversations. Here, here, uh, John, go ahead. We're having two different conversations. Look, half of all COVID deaths are black people. So let's not, let's not get all indignant about, you know, uh, your compassion for your pocket and, you know, whether you're going to go zero. I'm talking about, you know, the, half of these deaths, a quarter of all deaths are African-Americans 
one out of six people working in these big box retailers look like me. Half of all people who are black and brown don't have a job right now and run out of savings. They're tired of these games. We're rearranging the deck chairs of the Titanic. There is no plan, zero. We've never had masks in this country as a policy. It's always been ready, fire, aim. We need 100 days of masks. We need to knock it off. Stop all these games. It's not about monies or, or morals. It's, it, you're not going to have any money unless you have some morals. You're not going to have it. You can't just put your, your culture inside of your economy. We've got to flip it and put our economy inside of our culture and understand that, that this economy is all about our people. 58% of these businesses, Kevin, uh, 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 of these of the Americans live, work in small businesses with 50 employees or less. It, unless we do masks, they're not going to have a business. They're almost out of gas. And the stimulus is coming, needs to offset that in the short term, because that small business, Kevin, is you and me. You're not going to get to Wall Street unless you protect Main Street. It's not just about unemployment for individuals, because a small business is the end of individual. 96% of black small businesses don't have an employee, Kevin, which means that they're a self-employment project. So, so when, you, when you talk about the individual and the business in this example, it's the same thing. We need a national plan. I'll just, I'll just, I'll just opt for a plan. Kevin, let's agree on something. The small, independent city municipal strategy is wrong. Uh, ready, uh, where, you're, where you're clamping down in an uneven way. I agree with you. That's not smart. That's not smart policy. But we've never had the federal government do what the government says. We're at war with a virus. We need a national plan like the new Marshall Plan, and these will apply to everybody, rich and poor alike, because this is a rich man's virus. You and me can separate in our, in our homes with behind our gates and be okay. My friends working at Walmart or working at, at Sam's Club or working at Best Buy or the grocery store cannot... I listen. Kevin. I get it. I mean, I get it. But my question is very simple. Who decides? Is it at the city level, the state level, the federal level? Tell me what the rules are so I can make economic decisions on behalf of my employees. There are no rules. They're not the same. It's total chaos out there. It's obvious that's the situation. And it's totally unfair. What am I supposed to say to my CEO? I don't, they don't even know what the rules are in L.A. County anymore. I mean, how can I help them? And frankly, at this point, at the end of the day, I agree. If we need a national policy on masks, go ahead. But you still haven't answered me as to why my employees have to get fired for the third time and the big box guy gets to keep his working. Not fair. Not right. Completely wrong. Un-American, if you want to ask me. Why, why is it that... All right, uh, we're going to have... We're going to have to leave it there. Uh, no, you, you got a quick final thought, John, then we got to go. I'm just saying that no one, no one called for a virus. This is not a market economy activity. This is war with a virus that no one expected. So, of course, it's unfair. It's unfair that most black people are dying from this virus out of proportion to everybody else. Life's unfair. But we've got to respond to it because, uh, because, Kevin, and I believe in you, and I know you believe in America. America's not a country. She's an idea. And we can make her anything that we want. And right now, we need to be a cover for everybody so that she can be a cover for us. We need to protect the small guy because that small guy is driving this economy, including your and my business. And I know you believe that. All right. Uh, thanks, John. Uh, that, I you do. get the final word. Uh, okay. Kevin's got the final word. Two, final... Th Final two words. Thank you both. John uh, and Kevin O'Leary, John Hope Bryan. Here's a reminder. If you have a money dispute, Kevin wants to hear all sides and help you determine the best way forward. Go to